here's a day behind the scenes as a content creator. Well, here's a very real behind the scenes of a workday thing when you're self-employed. So, IRS terrifies me. Um, Welcome back to my channel for a special vlog. This is not a normal vlog because this is more of a focused topic. I have decided it would be very fun to show you what the behind the scenes of my workday as a content creator actually looks like. I am an avid consumer of YouTube. That's like, that's like what I watch for fun. And whenever I watch all of these people, some of them I know in real life, some of them I don't, I'm like, it really looks like all we do all day is like go to the grocery store and fold our laundry and things like that. But I know for a fact all these girls are doing the same thing as me, which is like sneaking in the little bits of the behind the scenes work in the morning before filming and then during lunch break and then for four hours in the evening and all that sort of stuff. So today I'm gonna show you the less glamorous, the more nitty gritty, but hopefully it's interesting. Just really pull back the curtain and show you what it looks like. First, I'm excited. I'll be showing you some of the equipment that I use too, the most important thing, my, my everyday camera. I'm getting to partner with Best Buy. So um, that's just a dream. And I will get to link my camera to help support my channel. And that's incredible. I'm thankful for that. Also, something kind of weird, let's quickly talk schedule. I'm filming this video on a Sunday. Normally, Sunday is the one day of the week that I don't work, but the one interesting thing about being self-employed is you really have control over your schedule. Normally, what a week looks like for me is Monday is for filming sit-down videos and then getting really ahead on just kind of all the computer work because the filming only takes a couple hours, so I use the rest of the day to do a lot of the admin stuff. Tuesday, Wednesdays, I film a vlog. Thursdays, I try to film all of my campaigns that are not on YouTube, and so normally that's filming all day. Um, and then Friday, Saturday, I film another vlog, and Sunday is my day off. I decided to switch up my week a little bit. I've taken a few days off filming, which has been, I'm feeling very rejuvenated and revived um, because Jordy was here. We went out of town for one of his shows. And then I took Kaylee's on a little day trip, birthday trip to celebrate her birthday before her baby comes. And so those are important for me to be present. So I'm making Sunday a work day. The thing about that is that means no emails are gonna come in, which is really great but also not as accurate of representation because I feel like sometimes an email will come through and just throw my day off and I'm like, oh, I have to fix this whole video for a brand that goes live tomorrow and like drop everything and do that. So um, just keep that in mind. But nevertheless, here's a day behind the scenes as a content creator. I decided I'm just gonna wear a pimple patch all day. So thank you for bearing with me while I do that. But like I mentioned first, let's talk equipment. I have very much streamlined my equipment for content creation down to pretty much one camera for 95% of what I do. As I mentioned, I'm getting to partner with Best Buy on this video so I can link my camera for you. But this is the Sony ZV-1 and this is the Mark II because they recently came out with the newer version of it. Pretty much all the content you see on my channel for the last three years has been filmed on this camera. I love it for so many reasons. First, it's so compact. I literally have some jackets that have like a chore pocket and I can just put it in my pocket and walk around and not feel like I'm like carrying this huge thing. The quality, as you can see, is so good. Right now, I'm filming this, obviously, so I can show you this, on the Sony ZV-1. And this is the, the newer version. This is the Mark II, Sony ZV-1 Mark II. One thing this camera does really good is something called electronic video stabilization. And basically what it does is, so when you're walking around, it doesn't look so shaky. It has a wider frame and it electronically crops it in to help kind of stabilize it as you're walking and moving. But the Mark II has an even wider frame, so I'm really excited about that. So um, I just picked up the newer version and from now on, when you see me vlogging, I'll film the rest of the vlog on this camera. You'll be able to see that the the angle and what you can see, the amount of things you can see in the frame will be even more, which I think is really good to not like have your face so close. It also has face priority AE, like automatic exposure, which I think is really, it's so smart. It knows exactly where your face is and the focus changes really quick as well, but also so does the exposure. So if you're somewhere dark, it can detect where your face is and how much light your face is getting and increase or decrease the exposure accordingly. It's just a smart little camera. I love it so much. Okay, really take note of how like wide angle this lens is. I'm just holding this at arm's length like I normally film my vlogs, but you can see so much more of the background behind me. 
and I'm selfishly so excited about this. I'm gonna go ahead and link this camera down below and that link does help to support my channel since I am getting to work with Best Buy on this video and I'm giddy. Okay, now let's talk about what we need to do for the day. Just a little side note, something I wanna say about the Mark II version of this camera that I just realized is different from the Mark I version is they've moved where the tripod screws into and that's because the last one, if you wanted to change the SD card or the battery, you would have to take off the tripod and I need to change the battery on this one but I couldn't do it while the tripod is still on which is so convenient. <gasps> it's gonna save me so much time. This is, it was already my favorite camera and this new version makes me love it even more. I just got a call from my mom. She's gonna be driving through Austin and she says she has a gift for the bride, which is so sweet. So that'll probably be my lunch break today. So today I need to edit some Instagram stories that I had previously filmed for a brand. And I normally like to edit those uh, about half the time on my computer. Film this vlog, I need to film a TikTok for this camera, which is exciting. I am onboarding a new employee tomorrow, which is very, very part-time. So I need to get ready for that meeting with her and get all those documents together and kind of the things that I want to remember to explain to her and train her on. I need to go through my inbox and then there's a lot of little things that I do pretty frequently, like go through my QuickBooks and categorize my expenses. I need to make some thumbnails. Ooh, Wednesday's vlog, I have just quickly uploaded it to send it into the brand for approval, but I haven't done any of the behind the scenes stuff besides the thumbnail. So I need to do all of the links, all of the timestamps, all of the tags, all of the um, end screens, all that sort of stuff to get ready for Wednesday's video to go live. And then I need to plan out my next week at a glance because I am leaving town again. So my schedule is kind of funky. I'm really excited to be in a season of life where I'm not traveling as much this next year and stick to much more of a filming schedule because I have that schedule that I explained earlier, but it moves and shifts all the time depending on travel. So I'm excited to just know like, oh, every Monday, sit down video. Oh, every Thursday, batch content for campaigns. You know what I mean? Actually, what's next is I'm going to get a thumbnail for this vlog and instead of keeping the footage out of the vlog, I'll show you how I do it because I record just footage and then I literally just screenshot this footage later. Since this is a themed work one, I'm gonna have my a camera, my computer. Move this a little more, maybe. Maybe also my phone. And I do a lot of different faces. <laughs> Sorry, fans. Another thing that I do is I try to think about what is the most interesting part of the video. Obviously this video is not gonna get as many clicks because it's much more niche and not as interesting in terms of like emotional or mental realizations or anything, but I do wanna to talk to y'all about a deal that I've recently signed and how that kind of plays into kind of some fears that I have as a content creator. And I know that I wanna talk about that, so I know I'm gonna to try to incorporate that into the title as well to appeal to different types of viewers, to the viewers that are interested in seeing the more um, detailed behind the scenes stuff, but then also the viewers that are just more interested in me and my life and like what I might be feeling or thinking. So because of that, I'm probably gonna title this video like a look behind the scenes of my life as a content creator, what a work day really looks for, like for me as a content creator, something like that. And then the more emotional part to appeal to the people that don't care about being a content creator or what that looks like and to kind of hit on me sharing some of the harder parts or more fears about it. So that's why I get a couple different options of thumbnails depending on how I end up titling it later. If I wanna just keep it lighthearted and maybe know that it might not appeal to as many types of viewers, I'll just do a more smiley one. But if I decide that my chat ends up being valuable, that could maybe also appeal to the types of viewers who care more about that type of content, then I'll use one of the faces with a little bit more serious of a look to tie it all in and make it make sense and kind of communicate what all the video has in it from one singular picture. I normally don't do this ahead of time. I normally do it when I am reviewing the video later, but I could just show you what that process looks like. Okay, when I upload all of my footage, I create a drive folder. This is what my drive looks like. They all have the 
the date of the video that's going live and kind of just what it's about. Normally I'll have two day vlogs, so I'll have day one, day two, thumbnail footage. And whenever you work with a brand, they send you a creative brief that basically says, make sure to not use these words when talking about our product. Here's a couple things we wanna highlight, whatever. So I put that in the folder as well for Tara, my sweet editor and my angel who I could not do this without. I just uploaded this to the drive folder to edit it on my little computer because I can only, this doesn't have an SD card slot on this computer and I lost my little SD to USB-C thing. So I'm gonna download what we just recorded and then I'm going to kind of scrub through it and find a scene that I like. Um, I'm realizing that this camera is so good that my pimple patch is really obvious. And I don't want to look so doom and gloom, but that's a good one if we talk about some of the more honest parts of it. And that one looks a little more candid. I kind of like the ones that look more candid and not as posed, even though most of the time they are absolutely posed. And I make all of my thumbnails on Canva. I create a design and I create a YouTube thumbnail. And I have saved the border as just background so that I could just import that. And now enjoy a montage as I play around with the text until I get it the way I like. And there we have it, my final product. I'm trying to communicate several things. When I just do one photo instead of several as a background, I feel like I can play around with like text a little bit more. I also think it performs a little bit better than if there's like a ton of little photos, but I don't know, I'm not sold on that theory yet. So this is what we got. Um, I think it hopefully is interesting and kind of conveys what the video has inside of it. I will say a personal goal of mine with my weekly schedule is once I like find a bit more of a rhythm and like don't mess with my schedule so much is finding a way to do all of these computery things in the same like between nine and six that I film because um, right now I fit it into weird pockets of time throughout my day whether it's late night if I have evening plans or in the evening, if I don't have evening plans or in the morning before I start filming. So a goal of mine moving forward is to like have more of like a nine to six work schedule and then fully devote mornings and evenings to working out or community or going to bed on time or doing those sorts of things. So that's a goal of mine moving forward. And maybe it is kind of nice to share some of the work things with the vlog instead of being like, nobody wants to see that and focusing only on the fun things with the vlog and then fitting in the work things later. I forever just reassess and change how I do things, but that's the next thing to reassess and change. What do y'all wanna do next? You wanna do a little bit of editing or do you wanna do a little bit of uploading and time stamping and product linking? I can't decide. Let's do a little bit of editing. Whenever I'm editing something for uh, TikTok or Instagram, I make sure to change the aspect ratio to 1080 by 1920 so this way it's a vertical and normally for instagram and tiktok things i just rough cut it on the computer because i feel like it is it performs better when the text is actually on, like instagram's text or tiktok's text I think it just looks a little bit more organic and a little less annoying. So I'm just gonna rough cut this. When you're working with a brand, they'll tell you how many frames you need for Instagram. That's part of the contract. So they'll say we need, you know, three frames or five frames or whatever. This contract is four frames. This is three minutes and 44 seconds of footage. I bet after it's cut down, it'll be about two minutes. So I'm going to cut this into four 30 second frames, give or take and then send them to my phone and add all the text and everything on my phone on Instagram before I then upload it to a dry folder and send it into the brand for approval. Like, I wish there was an easier way to cut a video and I'm sure there is into like even slices because you can't really do it on your phone easily. And what I do is I just like start four new projects and cut the remaining part paste it in the new project, or then cut a little bit more, paste it in the new project, whatever, and then export the four parts as four separate projects, which is not the most efficient. I'm sure there's a better way. In fact, I bet Tara can tell me a better way. Tara, if you're watching this, tell me a better way, please. <laughs>
is kind of that. That's how you submit just a little Instagram story campaign. Instagram story campaigns by far like pay the least because they're so fleeting, they're 24 hours. Um, but that, you know, takes a couple hours of work of filming, editing, uploading. The one thing that's kind of funny that people probably don't realize and annoying is obviously the brand wants to see like where the hashtags are placed and where the link is placed and everything like that. So you basically do it fake because then you just save it and you send it in. But then if you were to re-upload those, none of those are clickable. So then if they approve it, then when you re-upload it, you basically redo it all the exact same way that you sent it to them. But I send everything through Drive links. A lot of people use Dropbox. I like Drive. And now I'm gonna send this in for approval. There's a day it's supposed to go live because it's the last day of a sale. But sometimes they'll just say like anytime in August. And then what happened to me this month is I had several deals and it was supposed to be anytime in august but they didn't all approve it and say good to go till like basically the last week of august and then i was like shoot these are supposed to be spaced out like maybe one a week but now there's three days back to back <laughs> that i have to post these to fit them in so it's just kind of funny that's some things that people might not necessarily realize about the behind the scenes of it all but i'm going to get the share link for this folder send it into the brand I actually send it into my manager. My manager looks it over, she sends it into the brand, and it's this like long chain of command. <laughs> and I set a reminder on my phone the day to post Instagram stories because you can't schedule them out like YouTube videos, and I'm always worried I'm gonna forget to post on the right day. So I set a reminder on my phone for Instagram stories. <laughs> Well, before I get into the next computer task, I think my mom is like two minutes away and I like to fully focus on one task at a time to like get it done because I find if I stop in the middle of it, I kind of forget where I was. So we're going to have a little brunch break with mom. Um, I think she's only going to be here for like 30 minutes and then we'll hop into the next thing. Thanks for coming to work with me. It's way more fun than just like doing it on the couch in a blanket, just in a time and space vortex. That's normally how it goes. <laughs> We're here on a little brunch break, avocado toast and something sweet for mom. <laughs> for the bride. For the bride. Ooh, something <laughs> white. <laughs> you gotta make sure not to get chili oil on it. I know, I was like, we do it after. Oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> Aw, thanks mom. <laughs> That's sure really have cute. Some chances to wear it. Yeah, I'm it. actually doing a shoot with Jordy but I leave this next week at a lighthouse to get like our engagement things. I have two dresses on standby, but I kind of wanted to do a few looks. You, so maybe I can bring this as a- Chances to wear white. Yeah. It's so over cute. Yeah, till that wedding happens. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, here's a very real behind the scenes of a workday thing when you're self-employed. I cannot tell you what percentage of my brain thinks about taxes. S such a big percent. And my mom brought some mail that was apparently shipped to her house and in there is a letter from the IRS saying that I owe, that there's changes made to my 2022 form 1040. Maybe my accountant made some changes, my CPA, but now I owe an additional $10,200 by September 11th. I'm really hoping that's not true, but this looks pretty official. I'm gonna email my CPA and be like, what is this? And she's gonna be like, this is what this means. And if I owe, that unexpected sum of money, then that's just the big bummer. This is why we have emergency savings. I have emergency savings in my business and personal. But as you guys know, personally, this is probably the most expensive year of my life <laughs> with the house and the wedding and the move and the all, all sorts of things. There's, there's a ton of other things that have popped up that I haven't shared with the internet yet, but like Jordy might need surgery. There's like all sorts of things that now as a household and our family moving forward, if we get married, which we will. It's just kind of, it's, it's kind of a numbers game. So, IRS terrifies me. Well, at least get that email going. It's like when you give a mouse a cookie, when you give a mouse an IRS letter, she goes to her email to email her CPA and her financial advisor. When she sees the email from her financial advisor, she sees one that she hasn't opened yet. When she opens it, she remembers all the things that she needs to figure out soon. Basically this last week, I had literally a five hour financial planning meeting with my financial advisor. And we are discussing a ton of different things about um, of course, me moving to California is going to change a lot in terms of the structure of my business. I currently have an LLC in Texas that files as an S-Corp, and so we have to figure out exactly 
what I need to do in terms of like shutting that down and reincorporating in California or what that might look like. Also, I set aside my own taxes and then I file quarterly and like that tax amount is gonna change drastically because now I have to set aside state income taxes because I don't have to do that here in Texas. And also figuring out things in terms of Jordy and I combining finances. Currently he's a sole prop, but he's gonna have to set up his business as an LLC. So figuring that out um, and restructuring all of that. There's just like a lot of things. And she was saying that she had sent me something to send over to my CPA to just kind of confirm some things before I move forward with some of the more legal things. There's a lot of legalities that I do behind the scenes, which I didn't expect. But I guess it makes sense when you run a business, things are legal. And also when you move or get married, like those things then change. So there's a lot that I've had set up that I basically need to just completely redo. That's something that I need to kind of figure out, read through, and then figure out the exact questions that I wanna ask my CPA. I just sent her all the IRS stuff, but I told her I have more questions coming soon because there's a lot moving in different directions right now. So before I do, some more of the just like uploady type work. I want to sit down and explain this to y'all because I think that this is something that I know, I know a lot of my content creator friends struggle with. And for me, I've just entered into a situation to where this kind of fear is heightened. I always have a fear of being this close to running out of ideas of what to produce content about. I always kind of jokingly say, I'm one idea away from being out of ideas continuously and constantly having different series helps like i might reincorporate more sip and thrifts or things like that because that kind of helps lessen the mental burden and fear of running out of like themed ideas vlogging is interesting because it's just like whatever you're doing but you have to have something that is clickable and interesting enough to have engagement and high performance for yourself your own analytics and also for the brand who's paying you to work with you and I have just kind of always been like, I'm gonna figure out my next video when I get there. I'll have a list sometimes of ideas and I'll run through the list and I'll be like, oh, I'm out of ideas again. The reason that I am feeling a little more of this pressure of, oh my goodness, I hope I don't run out of ideas of things to do content on is because I just entered an interesting deal where I'm basically partnering with a company who um, takes a percentage of my ad revenue for the next however many years. And part of this contract is that I will agree contractually to post no less than 144 videos a year for the next three years. <laughs> and that's less than I've been posting a year for the last however many years. But there's almost this illusion of choice that makes it easier, like for the last five, six years, whatever, I've told myself, oh, I can always change my posting schedule if I want to. I can cut down to two videos a week if I really need to or whatever that might be. And I haven't needed to, so I've just kept up the same schedule. But now that I've entered this new deal, I have this kind of new unexpected fear of what if something happens? What if I burn out? What if I'm not able to fulfill that many deliverables a week for forever? What if I get pregnant? What if all these things happen? And mostly, what if I run out of ideas? When I think about that for sure, no matter what, I'm gonna have to come up with 432 more ideas of videos. Seeing that number in advance makes me, makes me honestly nervous. But I know it's just one day at a time, one video at a time, one week at a time like I've been doing. But in order for me to have a sustainable income and be able to rely on brand deals coming in and to be able to pay my employees and to pay my own bills and whatever, I have found it's really helpful to stick to a schedule. But that's it's a weird paradox of being in a creative job but sticking to an actual schedule and kind of having to force your creativity sometimes can be like a weird, like two very separate parts of your brain that you're like trying so hard to mesh together. Um, and it can be a struggle sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of a mind trip, I'm not gonna lie. It really is. Speaking of the illusion of choice again, I feel like I do the same thing to trick myself with work. I'm like, okay, Mikkel, you choose. What do you wanna do next? And it's like all things I don't really wanna do. But the illusion of choice makes it feel more fun. Let's upload a video. Here's the video that I'm working on that's currently going live on Wednesday. Um, I've already sent it into the brand, so all I've done when I've sent it into the brand is make sure that the title's correct, I've made a thumbnail, and then I have like the brand um, sponsorship link there. Otherwise, I make sure that my FTC says that this is sponsored because that's law to have a FTC. What does that stand for? Because my automatic uploads say it's not, so I always triple check to make sure it is. One thing I have to do is tags and I pay for this service that will tell me 
which tags have the highest ranking in the SEO. So I'll choose some of these after it refreshes. Some of these are not relevant, like how to crochet for beginners, no, but music business advice, music industry, things like that. Um, I'll just kind of click them until I fill all of this up. And then I'll check YouTube automatically places ad breaks. Sometimes they place a ton and I'll go through and delete them. This doesn't, this is basically four throughout the video for a 30 minute video. I feel okay with that because likely if someone's watching this, they'll be served two to three. They don't serve a hundred percent of the breaks that are placed, but I do make sure to just add my end screen. And thankfully you can just import from your last video. So I know that it will be in the right spot. And now the hard work is going through the video. I basically scrub through and look for things that I know I can link. Like I can link my tanks that I always link, the sweatshirt that I saw a little bit later. I can link those leggings and that top. And I just write them down and I'll go find all my links later. I can link um, this okay, tank. Fine. And I try to pick good words to describe them. So tan floral tank. And the thing is, the thing is, this is something that I would love to outsource one day is having people help me link all the things, but I know exactly in my mind, all the brands that it's from, that everything is from the best platform to link them through. And like, if they're even available for linking or not. So for example, this is an Everland cardigan. I know that this is the felted Merino wool cardigan. It's hard to train someone to know that like looking at this, that this is Everlane in the name of it. And I know that Everlane has the highest commission if I link this through magic links, as opposed to like LTK or something like that. And that's just from trial or error. Or I know that this tank is an express tank. Well, obviously I wear it every day. I know it's called the square net Mac tank. I know that this one also has the highest commission through magic links. So I should link it through magic links. It's all just stored up here. You know what I mean? So I'm going to finish doing this getting all the links in. Normally this takes me like 30 minutes of video just for the links and I'll be right back. I'm all set up and ready to film my TikTok. I'm going to be talking about this camera and my TikTok. So I'm going to do some clips on my phone to show the camera and then some clips on the camera to like show the quality of it. But this is normally my setup. I get good light from the window and I rest my phone against the mirror like this. I got more much on standby and then I have like the talking points in the brief ready to go in case I need to reference anything to make sure that I didn't miss anything. So this is, I, I film a lot of TikToks this way, but I'm not gonna take off the pimple patch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna still wear it for that. Okay, what I think I like about this edit is you can clearly see the difference between the iPhone quality versus when I switch over to filming. Look at like how much better that looks. So I like the juxtaposition because it really proves its own point. So I think I like this edit. I think I'm gonna keep it. TikTok edited. I'm gonna not bother with writing my caption until I send it in. <laughs> Cause frankly, I don't want to right now and I'm gonna do that later. Um, the next thing I have to do is I pay some of my people monthly and we're at the end of the month. So I have some invoices to pay. And then I have a list of some companies or brands that I'm gonna cold email with like the wedding and everything coming up and furnishing the new house. I've been reaching out more to brands myself. I haven't done that in a long time, but there are some things of like, if someone wants to work with me for the wedding or if someone wants to gift me a couch or something, I will definitely take it in this season. So there, I've been eyeballing some brands and I normally DM them and say, hey, um, I would love to work with you in any capacity and would love to be connected with whoever handles your marketing or your collaborations. And I'd say a little less than half the time, they will give me a direct email. And what I do, because I have a manager, is I'll normally cold email and see if they're even interested or not. And then if they are interested, I'll rope in my manager to kind of take over from there. Um, but I don't wanna burden her if it's just like the initial hello and the initial conversation. So I'm going to reach out to a couple possible wedding brands and just see if any of them are interested in working with me. Um, and I think that that's wrapping up computer things for the day. I do want to say something that's really helped kind of my brain with working and being self-employed is about once a year for the last three years, I will reread the same two books. 
One of them is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I'm sure you've heard of it. And the other one I started reading again yesterday at um, on my day off by the pool, and it's To Hell with the Hustle. This is by Jeff Bethke, and it's actually so funny. I'm so bad at recognizing who had written a book that I'm reading, but last year when I was in Maui with Jordy, someone had flown him out to play for their church, and then he invited us over to their house, and we hung out with him all day, and it wasn't until the end of the night that I realized it was the Bethkeys. I just didn't really know of them, but I love his book. And it is really so centering and helpful for me to kind of put things back into perspective because when you are self-employed, it's very easy to make every day about, oh, there's things piling up and I need to do it or else they won't get done. And then all of a sudden you're worshiping work and it's all you do and it's what you live for. And I think if you are a believer in Jesus like me, that it can become kind of your God. And um, so this helps me reframe things a lot. And that is something you really prioritize. So two resources, if you're interested, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and To Hell with the Hustle. And now I can tell you that Alyssa and Jeff Bethke are some of the kindest people ever and so talented and smart and great authors. <laughs> okay guys, we're now approaching evening territory. Um, I think my personal things, which are not work related tonight, are gonna be giving this boy a bath and also washing some of the bedding, like the quilts and duvet cover and things on my bed that I haven't gotten around to. And I wait to do things like laundry and dishes and stuff until after I'm done filming for the day because they're too loud and you will be able to hear them in the background of video. So that's another thing I plan around. But with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this focused themed vlog right here. Yeah, what is happening, huh? I'm really honored to get to show you a little bit more about the behind the scenes of what I do. and. Every single day is different. There's a lot of recurring themes, but every single day looks different as to the like actual work work that I'm doing. So I don't know if this is interesting to you. And if you want more of these types of videos incorporated, if this doesn't totally flop, which statistically I know it probably will, let me know. And I would love to incorporate them from time to time. But I also want to say thanks again to Best Buy for partnering with me on this video, for making my business possible. Now you can maybe understand a little bit more about why getting to partner with amazing brands is so essential to continuing to run this business and um, employ people and just, just do it all. So I'm honored and thankful, especially when I get to talk about products that I have purchased myself and loved for years and years and years, like that feels extra special. So I'm going to have the Sony ZV-1 Mark II linked for you if you want a camera, if you're in the market for that, for anything, for fun, for documenting family videos, or for maybe starting a business and profiting off of it. There's a lot of reasons why you you might love this camera so i'll have a link for you i love y'all thank you for spending a work day with me even though it's a sunday so it felt so great because there were no curveballs thrown in my direction <laughs> i had a plan i stick to it nobody asked me for anything it was fantastic i love you okay i'm gonna see you in a regular vlog very soon So let's take all right,